Hi, Charlene. Thank you so much uh, for sitting down and, and talking with me. I have to admit, I almost, <laughs> I almost called you Agnes. Yeah. <laughs> um, your, your performance uh, is is really just incredibly moving, and and you know reminds me of a lot of parts of my childhood, um, watching my parents work as hard as they did, and growing up in Afro Caribbean household, and you know, facing the similar kinds of pitfalls Kingsley faces in the classroom and, and beyond. Um, but it, it was just a beautiful transformation to watch throughout the film. Um, but before we get into that, how has the year been for you? How's it been treating you? Aside from all the other craziness, um, the pandemic, the politics, and a lot of the shortcomings that have been going on, how's it been for you and yours? Yeah, we've been fine. Thank you for asking, Jamal. Um, we've we've had, despite yeah, as you say, what's going on in the world, it's been fine, and it's been an opportunity to actually spend some really good quality time with uh, with my son, with uh, my small family. So actually, there's been some positives, despite what's going on. But we're fine. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I've 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 heard that um, frequently when I ask folks how how they're doing. Um, despite a lot of what's going on, that there are silver linings and there are a lot of things to look to look forward to, um, especially the work that you've been putting forward in, in education. What's it been like working with someone like Steve McQueen? The work that that he does, it hits and it's it's so potent and it's so poignant and so deliberately crafted, um, and it plays out as well in your performance. What, what's it? What's the overall experience been like on the set of something like Education? Uh, the uh, experience on education was remarkable and magical and um, hard and fantastic and brilliant and uplifting and we all knew we were part of something special. I feel like there was a feeling on set that we were doing something um, historical almost, you know, seeing so many black and brown faces in every department, maybe not as much as we would have liked, but you know, a strong presence on set and a strong presence behind set and obviously you've got Shabier who who's a DOP on there and just working with this phenomenal talent was an absolute pleasure and timely as well. It just couldn't come at, I mean, at the time we didn't know it was timely, but for us, it still felt timely because we were all black telling these stories of the West Indian community of the African Caribbean community. So it just always felt like a real responsibility, but in the most brilliant way. Um, and that we were there to do some uh, some fantastic work. I knew I had a responsibility, I, I'll say that. I just felt like I knew I had to be authentic and tell the stories in an authentic way so as not to upset people of the African diaspora. Because if we've all got one thing in common, we can be quite harsh. So to know that, <laughs> <laughs> just to know that, um, it, you know, it just kept me on my toes. Now I'm working with Steve and he's got a certain level of expectation and artistry and mastery and just knowing what he can create in all his genres that he, he has, his, what he's experienced in and knowing that he will take care of you and knowing that you can be free to fall and take risks because he's got you and he will catch you and just to trust in the process, you know, inevitably it will be fantastic yeah and it certainly it certainly plays out that way in in such an organic and genuine way um on screen uh, between yourself and your castmates um what was it like also you know when we think about um politics when we think about politics and education and when we think about um african and and uh, Afro-Caribbean history, it's almost always rooted in, in like the States. Like for me, uh, born and raised uh, in, in, in South Florida and just born and raised in the South, I always knew it through the lens and the context of, of America, of, um, of the West. What was it like to now bring um, London's history with Afro-Caribbean communities to the center, you know, and to be able to teach folks like myself who were totally unaware of something mm. like the 80s and the Afro-Caribbean community in London. What, what, what's it been like to bring that to, to audiences outside of London? Well, I think it's just been a fantastic and an uplifting um, performance uh, experience. Just to know that we're, be, we're able to share these stories and knowing that our brothers and sisters in, in the States will hopefully see some similarities of 
how you maybe grew up and what your struggles and your fights and the unsung heroes that you have in your community and seeing them on the screen. So for us, I mean, you know, West Indian people, we probably think we're amazing anyway, anyway, no matter where we are in the world. Um, we assume that everybody knows our story, but being able to actually share it with you and share it with the world, we have a sense of pride that is very deep running. And um, yeah, hopefully it's, it's, it's just going to open up the whole world. I mean, if we have this music in connection with each other, you know, Bob Marley being one of the greatest exports from Jamaica and the West Indies and Calypso music and reggaeton from, you know, there's all this diversity, but specifically London. I mean, I'm from Nottingham originally, born and bred where Robin Hood is from, did you know? So we still have our own experiences of being West Indian in the Midlands and in, in the East Midlands and obviously down to London and Birmingham and Leeds and Manchester and all these places. So it gives me a sense of pride that now we'll be able to talk on a different level that you will understand that we are not as, as different from each other as you might, have, might think. Our struggles are actually very, very similar. Yeah. It's it, there's so much nuance there as well because growing up, growing up, uh, you know, in a West Indian family in in, in South Florida, it's that, that's a very particular kind of West Indian Afro Caribbean community. But yeah. to see it, you know, to to hear some of uh, um, some of the ways characters will, will interact and in some of the the um, the dialects and some of the slang and to, to hear that and be reminded of my own childhood, but to be separated by so many miles is, is just mm. fascinating at the same time. Um, tell us about, tell us about Agnes. It, it, I couldn't watch for more than five minutes and just think of my mother and my aunts and just think of other powerful women in my mm. family who have to be stoic and have to put their head down and just go forward and persevere the way that they do. Um, what was it like to, come into contact with a character like Agnes and, and work work with that? Um, again, it was an honor. And it, a bit like you, a little bit like you, I felt like I was channeling my great aunt, um, who is a huge presence in my family. Even the house, the way the house is decorated on, on the screen, the authenticity. Some of us were brought to tears just by looking at a table that we all remember when we were kids and, you know, the settees that, or well, that would have been had a bit of plastic on and whatever, but getting into Agnes and recognizing that she was a hardworking woman. Um, you know, she's a registered nurse. She's taken on additional work as a cleaner and she really has to be focused on um, supporting and providing for her family. And she may not seem loving in the first instance, but she shows her love through her work and being able to provide a house and to be able to provide food for you to leave and not eat in the morning, you know, and be able to put the meat on the table and to keep you all fed and warm and clothed and sheltered. That's, that was Agnes's drive. Um, so to get in there, I mean, it helped with the costume. Costume was remarkable. I mean, I remember trying on the different wigs and the different styles and talking to people, should it be an afro, should it be straight, which one, you know, the, these little details. And when I finally really stepped into Agnes is when I found her brown coat. I put that coat on and we found a brooch and I was just, I was in, I was, I was Agnes. I remember getting out of the taxi because everything was so quick on set and it was brilliant. I love working at a high pace and the pressure. And I got out of the taxi and I just, I was just ready. There was no need for any small talk. I just wanted you to go action so we could just get it going. I was, I was with her, she was with me and I'm going to play you woman and I'm going to do, I'm going to make you proud, Agnes, is what I was really thinking. I'm here to make you proud. But yeah, putting on that coat and finding the headscarf as well for Agnes and the shoes, because obviously I'm sure it's obsessed. I mean, not obviously, but I am. Once I found her shoes as well, ah. Oh, she just came alive for me, so yeah. There's so many iconic, uh, just uh, visual, you know, elements that make Agnes who she is, and I think you're so right about that. But also, I think about the kind of stoicism that's that's often attributed to, like the father figure. Yeah. Um, I think of like a Troy Maxson from Fences. You know, I'm this way and I'm this harsh because I love you, right? Yeah. And that's the same kind of of message that Agnes is. Is, is trying to communicate at the beginning as well. Um, were there any kind of 
I'm sorry, well, you can go. No, 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 I was going to say it was great because you get to see Agnes transform from that stoic um, personality to someone who was willing to change and to grow and to take the risk to grow. I was going to ask if there was anyone in particular, maybe performances you had in mind, um, leading ladies who have inspired you in certain ways or, or maybe scenes from films or maybe or, or theater that helped inform the way you would play Agnes or was this coming from like somewhere deep inside and it's a, sort of a new exploration for you on a personal level? I think on a personal level it's come it comes from representing the West Indian community as best that I can um, and in a way that makes um, the African diaspora and as West Indians proud. Um, I'm Jamaican descent and um, Agnes is from Grenada so I needed to get her accent perfect, as close to perfect because I don't want any emails telling me that wasn't great um, and I had a huge responsibility to make sure that you know I was able to do that well. Um, so what was the second part of the question again? I was just wondering if there are maybe any other actresses, any other films yeah. or, or maybe scenes you were able to be inspired by? So interestingly, you brought up Fences. Well, Viola Davis's performance in Fences um, is an inspiration to me and is at the, it's a type of performance, I think, any um, self-respecting actor would probably aim for. And that doesn't mean I'm trying to, I'm aiming to be Viola, but just the respect that I have for her as an artist and the way she explores her characters and actually lets you in emotionally. I guess that's what I'm going for. And actually watching her makes me feel brave enough to allow that to happen, to allow people into my emotional um, vocabulary, as it were so that I can authentically create these characters for you to feel something and come away inspired or joyous or hopeful or sad or contemplative. It, it's that. Um, so yes, Viola and Fences was a huge inspiration for, for tone and just her presence as well. And, and jumping into such a significant historical moment, um, especially with the anthology, were you introduced to new things about, about London, the general space, um, maybe new parts of the history you didn't know before? I feel like I'm, I'm learning something new every day about like US history, but how enlightening was this experience overall as well? I think this whole anthology is an education. So I'm sort of pleased that it was wrapped with education because the whole thing is an education. Some of us would know some of the stories, some of us may be slightly familiar and some of us are coming to them fresh and brand new. The story in education for me was fresh and brand new. I had no idea that people were being bussed out and told they were educationally subnormal. And those words really broke my heart that there are people out there who just probably needed a bit more help were marred in that way um so i have learned a lot and learned that other people know of things that perhaps i didn't know about the new cross fire in the alex wheatle um film was something i knew about because my uncle many many years ago was adamant that he showed me the house he showed me the building and let me know but i know lots of other people who had no idea until they'd seen that film so cleverly education come in last and I really believe the whole anthology is in education and I have learned an immense amount. Um, Leroy Logan as a character who's a real person who I then saw on the news the next day. It really it really has opened my eyes to, to a lot of unsung heroes that we have in the West Indian community in, in, uh, in Britain. And it, it made me really proud to just get to see that again representation and to see such stellar performances by you all. What can what can fans look forward to uh, in the future? Anything you're working on? Anything you might be allowed to to speak on uh, that you could share with us? Uh, a little cheeky share. Um, I not long wrapped on a beautiful film with another fantastic award winning uh, director. Her name is Debbie Tucker Green. I don't know if you know of her um, in the US yet, but you will. Um, she's made a beautiful film. I'm not sure how much I can say, but I play a US mum. So it'll be interesting for you to see. Um, and again, exploring ideas of identity and race and acceptance and love and hope and joy and all of these things that 
I hope education is um, inspiring in people. But that's what I'm working on next, uh, a, a new film, Ear for Eye with Debbie Tucker Green. Well, Charlene, I'm, I'm incredibly excited to see that. The work that you've been putting out is, is stellar and it's moving and, in, and inspiring. So I have no doubt we'll continue to see more of your work in the future. Really appreciate you sitting down and, and speaking with me and, and hope you get to enjoy the rest of the year. 2020 is almost over, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> But thank you again. Appreciate your time and you take care. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you.